reporting live from the capital. We apologize for disturbing your viewing, however, we have breaking news. The Member of Parliament for the Grenada Hills Province in Mesa Marrakesh, Advocate Sanchino Morales, was brutally attacked by dissidents in the early hours of this morning. Villagers found his body on the main road and rushed him to the nearest hospital. According to eyewitnesses, the dissidents dragged him out of bed, at his large estate, just after midnight and they took him to a place where they had gathered other locals that they considered to be sellouts. Apparently, the dissidents were angry with Advocate Morales because his law firm recently won a high-profile case for a senior official in the ruling party, and the dissidents were also angry that although Advocate Morales belongs to the same tribe as them, he was seen to support the ruling tribe and he was even their representative, that is, as the MP for the Grenada Hills province. Eyewitnesses have stated that Advocate and MP Sanchino Morales was flogged, severely beaten for hours, and kicked by the dissidents until he lost consciousness. The dissidents also threatened to attack one of the lawyers at his law firm, a Miss Olivia Garcia, who recently won a court case on behalf of a senior member of the ruling party. Inside sources at Morales and Truffes, that is, at Advocate Morales' law firm, have confirmed that Miss Olivia Garcia has since fled the country out of fear of the dissidents. Advocate MP Sanchino Morales is currently in a critical condition in hospital. However, as a gallant soldier and former freedom fighter, we believe that he won't leave this world without putting up a big fight. Our team will share a few short videos of the interviews I had with Advocate Morales a few years back. We had to pull out these videos from our archives. Commander Morales, thank you for agreeing to meet with us. You have been on the colonialists wanted list for the past few years. The government of Mesa Marrakesh has accused you and your fellow comrades of disturbing the peace and causing national unrest due to the successful strike that you organized. Right now, you are in hiding. What do you have to say about all of this? This so-called government was forced upon our people. Mesa Marrakesh belongs to our people. We are the majority. We will not sit down and let these people rule over us. We will not sit down and watch them treat us like slaves and subhumans in our own country. We will continue to fight for our freedom and basic human rights. We would rather die fighting for what we believe in than to live an oppressed and frustrated life. We will never surrender or put down arms until our people are liberated. Commander Santino Morales, a gallant son of the soil of Mesa Marrakesh, was recently arrested at the northern border of the country. It is believed that he was caught with a truckload of explosives, ammunition and guns that he was transporting from Ender to Mesa Marrakesh. Apparently, the guns and ammunition were meant to be used by the freedom fighters in Mesa Marrakesh. After the commander's arrest, several freedom fighters started destroying army barracks and they infiltrated almost all of the government offices. The war between the colonialists and the freedom fighters has intensified leading people to suspect that the explosives and ammunition, brought by Commander Morales, were just a decoy. So, while the whole country was focusing on his arrest, the freedom fighters were bringing in a lot more weapons of warfare through tunnels and undetected in cargo ships. It appears that Commander Santino Morales risked his life and sacrificed everything for the freedom of the oppressed people of Mesa Marrakesh. He now faces life imprisonment. Commander Santino Morales, thank you for agreeing to meet with me here at the New Zemia head office. Your country, Mesa Marrakesh? recently gained independence and the new government freed all political prisoners. You are one of the political prisoners who was recently freed from prison. How do you feel seeing that the formerly disadvantaged people in your country have gained independence? We are very happy. We give God all the glory. We never gave up because God was with us and he assured us that we would be victorious against the evil one who resided in the hearts of those who oppressed us. For greater is he who is in us than him who is in the world. We are now looking forward to a great future for all of the people living in our beautiful country of Mesa Marrakesh, a future where we can forgive, heal, reconcile and work together to make our country greater than ever before. Thank you, Commander. Those are great words from a great man. 
we pray for Advocate Commander and MP of Grenada Hills Province in Mesa Marrakesh, Sanchina Morales' speedy recovery. Our prayers are with this great and gallant soldier. This is a developing story. We will keep you updated. This is Anita Green from New Zemia, signing out. Jessica, I just saw the news. Please send an urgent message to the Defense Minister and ask him to send a medical team and helicopters to Granada Hills Province to pick up Advocate and Member of Parliament, Santino Morales. They must fly him to a neighboring and more medically advanced country for treatment, and I want him to be guarded 24-7. Also, get the police minister on the phone. I want the hooligans, who attacked Morales, to be caught and punished severely for what they did. In fact, we're sending the Secret Service to Granada Hills to investigate this case. Yes, Mr. President. Right away, sir. I don't know how I overlooked this great soldier when I was setting up my cabinet. Jessica, also announced that there will be a cabinet reshuffle. As soon as Morales recovers, I will be giving him the post of Deputy Minister of Defense and Vice President of an independent Mesa Marrakesh. That will make Advocate Sanchino Morales the second most powerful man in the country and region. He will only be second to you, Mr. President. Yes, in fact, this brave soldier deserves my seat. So get to it, Jessica, and arrange for an emergency cabinet meeting within two days. Yes, Mr. President, sir. We should give credit where it is due. More than half of my cabinet aren't half as brave as Morales and most of them did nothing for the liberation of our country. Instead, they wore army uniforms and stood behind the gallant soldiers who went to the forefront to fight for our freedom. Now, Morales is a different story as he led troops across nations and fought for the freedom of oppressed communities, and he was willing to die for the freedom of the people of Mesa Marrakesh. Tell me why I shouldn't give him the second most powerful position in the land. Yes, sir. He is a great soldier. We also read about him in history books at high school. What is it, Mr. President, sir? We were looking for a name to give that new high school that we've started building in the capital. I have decided that we will call the school Santino Morales High School, and we are going to change the name of the main street, in the second largest city of this great nation, from the colonial name it currently has to Santino Morales Street so that Morales' name, and what he did for this great country of ours is not forgotten by generations to come. Yes, Mr. President. As standard procedure, everyone who takes over the position of President, Vice President, and anyone who sits in the two most powerful positions in the Defense Ministry is allocated a mansion. 24, 7 security personnel and is given a huge paycheck. Shall I put all of that in place while we wait for Advocate Morale's full recovery? Yes, get to it right away. Will that be all, Mr. President? Yes, thank you, Jessica. Your father's condition is very bad. Those hooligans beat him up and left him for dead. I do not think that they wanted to kill him mother because I'm sure they'd have shot him if they wanted him dead. How can you be so sure? I think you have something to do with this. No mother, I know nothing about this. It was only a few days ago that you threatened to deal with your dad after he had lunch with Olivia. I, I didn't mean all of that mother. I was angry but I could never hurt my dad. We totally misunderstood the whole situation. When your dad got home, he explained the whole situation to me and I am ashamed that I accused him of cheating on me. You mean that dad was innocent all along? Yes, and his beating has turned into a serious matter because the army and secret service are now involved. What? In fact, I heard that the president of our country is now personally involved in this matter. It's only a matter of time before they find out who is behind this mess. Juliet, my child, I hope you are not involved in this mess because if you are, and if those hooligans mention your name, you will be arrested. Pray that your dad doesn't die because if he dies then you will be charged with premeditated murder. No mother, I know nothing. I promise you that I am innocent of all this. My hands are clean. I hope so. This matter is no longer in my hands. The army has taken your dad to a more medically advanced nation for treatment. All we can do now is to pray for his speedy and full recovery. Welcome back to the country, Chief Minister. Thank you, Mr. President, sir. 
When I heard about what happened to Santino Morales, I had to personally visit him at the hospital outside the country. How is the commander doing? We thank God for his speedy recovery however, we've kept his whereabouts and health condition a secret, even from his own family, until our investigations are complete. Right. According to the Secret Service, it appears that Morales' eldest daughter, Juliet, hired the hooligans to beat up her dad. However, it is not clear what the motive was. We were planning on arresting Juliet based on the evidence of CCTV footage and two eyewitnesses, and as soon as we find out what her motive for getting her father brutally attacked was however, Morales requested that we pardon Juliet. He refused to press charges against his daughter instead, he swore to abandon Juliet and her mother at the farm whilst he relocates elsewhere with his younger daughter, Sanaya. What? The daughter tried to get her father killed? Sadly yes Mr. President but we still don't know what her motive was. It is evident that she purposely left the doors and gates unlocked. We saw the footage on the hidden CCTV cameras that are on the estate. Get the police to interrogate her. We cannot let this evil act go unpunished. Her father has pardoned her sir so our hands are tired. The girl is wayward, unruly, and spoiled. Many have called her an evil child. I think her behavior is spiritual, she is not in control of what she thinks or does. We all have problems but that doesn't give us the right to commit crimes. If we all got our parents flogged each time they hurt us then this world would be chaotic. What else do you know about this girl? She has had a string of lovers from a young age. She was born in Endor since her mother is from there. She fails dismally at school and is set to start her fourth high school year at a prestigious school in that great city of Alexander Bay. Get her kicked out of the school. Instruct the headmaster of the school to withdraw the acceptance letter. She must come down from her high horse. I want her to study in one of those farm schools next to her father's estate. Mr. President Sir. Perhaps studying with commoners will help her to become humble. If her father won't teach her a lesson then it's our duty to do so. Yes, you and I are aware that only students with good grades qualify to attend that prestigious school in Alexander Bay Hints. Her dad or mother must have pulled a few strings to get her into that school, and we are going to make sure that her acceptance letter is withdrawn with immediate effect. Yes, sir. I hope the commander will reconsider his position and press charges. Let's hope so. If not then the way he brought up this girl is partly responsible for the kind of person that she has become. Will that be all, sir? Arrest this girl and get her flogged. Interrogate her and teach her a lesson so that she never tries this again. Her father may do nothing about her behavior but as president of this great nation, and as a father myself, I am not going to sit around and do nothing. Yes, Mr. President, sir. Why did you insist on seeing me today yet? I told you to lay low until the police and secret service stop snooping around. There is fire on the mountain. What do you mean by that? Speak already. I don't have time for proverbs. As I was approaching our estate, I saw swarms of police, soldiers and secret service personnel combing through our estate looking for clues. They want to know who beat up dad and why. I overheard some of them asking one of our employees about my whereabouts, I think I am a suspect. When I planned dad's attack, I didn't think that the whole issue would be blown out of proportion. We followed your orders. I didn't ask you to kill him, I only asked you to teach him a lesson. Instead, you beat him up so badly and left him for dead, and right now, he is busy fighting for his life. Do you know what will happen to us if he dies? I stand to lose everything if he dies. He fought us back like the soldier he is hence, we tied him up and ganged up on him. I had no control over what my subordinates did. If I had intervened then all of the dissidents would have suspected me of using them to carry out my personal vendetta. You know that, even though we are merely outlaws, thieves and hooligans albeit, masquerading as honorable dissidents, we still have some code of honor. If the dissidents find out that I used them to carry out your dirty work then they will skin me alive. What? I thought you were their leader. Yes, I am but there is always someone who is after my position. Also. I cannot endanger the lives of my followers for personal gain. I came to warn you not to mention my name to anyone, not to the police, and not to your hooligans. That's a little too late because the guys who connected you with me have sold you out. There is word on the street that the police will be interrogating you soon. I came here to warn you not to mention my name or else. Or else what? Do you know who you are threatening? I am now one of the most powerful witches that has ever lived, I am a direct descendant of the witches of Endor. I don't care. 
do your worst, however, be careful because one day you will meet your match. You have been warned. I am not afraid of you. Let me show you what I am made of. You will not try that nonsense with me. Before I came here, I made sure I was protected. In our line of work, we use whatever we can get to protect ourselves from bullets, knives, and evil people like you. I can guarantee you that anything you do to me will be done to you. You can't touch me. Helicopters. Airways. It seems that we underestimated exactly how powerful your father really is. We better get out of here. Don't be afraid. I know this forest and its secret tunnels like the back of my hand. Be fast. Let's get out of here. A few months later. Commander, you're back. You and I are aware that Juliet planned my attack. You and your daughter almost killed me. I, I had nothing to do with it. Your daughter told the police everything that transpired at the cafe, and how you made her believe that I was cheating on you. She confessed that she had me attacked because she feared that I'd have children with another woman, and those children would want a share of my estate. You also told her that if I left you then you would never be able to afford this lifestyle that you are now accustomed to. I should have stopped Juliet from plotting to hurt you. I am sorry, Morales. Since you and your daughter are only after my estate, I have decided to leave the estate for you. Hence, from today onwards, I want nothing to do with you, the estate, supermarket and certainly nothing to do with Juliet. You and your two daughters can have it all. We, we can't afford to pay the mortgage. No, don't worry about that. I will continue to pay the mortgage. The only good that ever came out of my relationship with you, is my beautiful and good-hearted daughter, Sanaya. I will move Sanaya to a good school in Alexander Bay as soon as she starts high school. Love, can't you pull a few more strings so that Juliet gets accepted at one of the good schools at Alexander Bay? She is not coping at the public school near our place since the private school, at Alexander Bay, that she was preparing to attend, wrote to say that they had withdrawn the acceptance letter because of her poor grades. I don't want anything to do with that girl. In fact, I will try by all means never to step foot on that estate again. If possible, I don't ever want to see Juliet again in my life. I'm ashamed to even call her my daughter. Hence, if she has problems, you should solve them. So, where will you stay? It's all over the news that you're now the VP of Mesa Marrakesh and you're now the second most powerful man in the region. It's none of your business where I will live. I have given you and your daughter what you want. You're still my husband, aren't you? I don't know if I will be able to get used to being surrounded by armed security personnel everywhere I go. As the wife of a powerful and wealthy man, I guess I will have to adjust. Woman, I am not going anywhere with you. You are not moving in with me in my new mansion in the capital city. In fact, I don't ever want to see you or your daughter anywhere near me, my office or my home. Don't call me, instead you can contact my assistant. The only reason why I have decided not to divorce you is because of Sanaya. I want her to grow up with both of her parents, although we will be living apart. If I divorce you then I will be leaving her at the mercy of you and that evil sister of hers. By the way, you and your daughter shouldn't ever try to bewitch me again. I have fortified myself and covered myself with the precious blood of Jesus. I know how your kind operates and I have sanctified my office, home, vehicles and everything else of mine. You and your daughter can't touch me. Your daughter must have tried her witchcraft on me and failed hence, she got those hooligans to attack me. Now, the Lord has brought many police, secret service and army officials to protect me. This is over and above his holy angels that protect me day and night. Don't say that. You know that I disconnected myself from all evil long back. I have to go now. I thought I'd tell you all this face to face. I think I owe you that much, in memory of the few good times we had. Goodbye Imani Burles. No, no, you cannot do this to me Santino Morales. No, how will I survive or live without you? Who will keep you warm at night when I am not there? No Santino, no, you cannot do this to me, to us, to our love.
My helicopter is waiting for me. I'm leaving here as a free man. I just lost a chance to become famous and led an ultra luxurious life as the vice president's wife because of Juliet and those damn familiar spirits from Endor. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if another woman took my husband away from me. Commander, oh Commander Santino Morales, please come back to me. Please come back and heal my broken heart. I even came here all dressed up thinking that I was being flown to the capital city. I am so hurt and embarrassed, I don't even know where to hide my face. Imani spent the rest of her days living on the estate with Juliet, and occasionally, Sanara would visit them during school holidays. Imani spent the rest of her life waiting for Santino to take her back. She never got over the fact that Santino did not want her to love her anymore. She and her daughter, Juliet, even tried everything in their power to force him back into their lives to no avail. Instead Santino would make frequent visits to Alexander Bay to visit Sanaya, take her out for shopping and lunch, before heading back to the capital. Santino lived to become one of the wealthiest and powerful men that ever lived in Mesa Marrakesh and its surrounding regions. So, the Lord worked everything out for Santino Morales good. It took a near-death experience for him to move into the second highest and most powerful position in the land, in fact, in the entire region, because the country of Mesa Marrakesh was very powerful and rich in natural resources and technology, and it was a great force to reckon with. Romans 8:28 KJV says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Genesis 50, 19-21 says, And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, ye thought evil against me? But God meant it unto good, to bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not, I will nourish you, and your little ones. And he comforted them, and spake kindly unto them. Isaiah 54, 14 to 15, and 17 says, In righteousness shalt thou be established, thou shalt be far from oppression. For thou shalt not fear, and from terror. For it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against thee shall fall for thy sake. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Naya, yesterday you mentioned that your dad flew in to take you out for lunch. So, how was it? As usual, I enjoy every moment that I spend with my dad. You're lucky, my parents have never taken me out for lunch. The thing is that my mum and older sister, Juliet, live on the farm in Granada Hills whereas, my dad lives in the capital city. So, I only get to see my dad once in a while however, I hope to live with him once I move to the university in the capital city to, hopefully, study medicine. What? How come your parents don't stay together? None of us have ever been to dad's house in the capital city. Dad may have another family there for all I know. What? Let me show you a photo of my mum and sister. How come your mother and sister are darker in complexion whereas you are quite fair skinned? I took after my dad. By the way, my sister Juliet and I don't get along. In fact, my sister hates me for no reason. What? Perhaps, you are not used to seeing many people with this skin shade. Well, you see, my mother comes from Endor. Endor? Yes and she comes from a region in Endor that is notorious for great levels of witchcraft. The kind of witchcraft that they practice in Endor is unmatched. I promise you Rebecca, you've never seen or heard of anything like it. Aren't you scared Sanaya? I am scared of them but what can I do? Those evil people do as they please and so far, no one has ever been able to stop them. I am sorry, I don't know what to say. Even my dad says that his father's second wife is a witch and she has laid curses on all of the females in our family, me included. 
and we don't have any idea how we will break free. It's bad, Becca. We are surrounded by so much evil and our elders, the ones who should protect and guide us, have no idea how to overcome these witches and wizards instead, we live in constant fear. My dad says that Jesus can set us free from all evil. He says that God is above all however, I don't know where to begin. I do not know how to pray effectively. These adults confuse us because on one hand they preach Christianity and behind closed doors, they make us worship the gods of our land and ancestors. Personally, I have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. I refuse to worship or have anything to do with other gods. Yes but we can't abandon our traditions. My mother says that we ought to remain true and loyal to our traditions and traditional beliefs, and at the same time, we must worship the Lord. I get really confused at times however, I choose to obey my mother hence, I worship both. No Sanaya, I think you're treading on dangerous ground. You can't have one foot in Christianity and another in heathen practices. You need to pick a side and stick to it. I know for a fact that the Lord says that we shouldn't worship other gods. I suggest that you read the Bible for yourself. I don't know Rebecca. On a different note, my dad said that he met your dad on one of his flights to the capital city last week. Oh really? That's interesting. Shh. Our mathematics teacher is finally here. Yes. I love math. Mathematics is currently not one of my strengths. <laughs> Matthew 8 16 to 17 KJV says, When the even was come, they brought into him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by says the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities, and bare our sicknesses. Revelation 12 10-11 says, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation, and strength, and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ, for the accuser of our brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. Deuteronomy 31, 6, and 8 says, Be strong and of a good courage, fear not, nor be afraid of them, for the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee, he will not fail thee. Neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. Exodus 14:14 14, 14 KJV The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Matthew 28, 18-20 says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and, lo, I am with you alway, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Romans 8 37 39 KJV Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor hide, nor depth nor any other creature, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Isaiah 54, 17 says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. If a science 6, 12 to 18 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching Therunta with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Quotes. I have
got great news for you, Commander. Go on, tell me. I can't wait to hear the news. Have a look at this, Mr. Vice President. What is that? I am very happy, Coco. You've made me the happiest man alive. I thank God for the day that I met you at the World Summit in Amsterdam. You're going to be a dad again. Yes, and this time I will be a dad to a baby boy. Yes. We are now husband and wife. Yes, I am still married to Amani on paper but I am legally married to you as well. If I divorce Amani then my daughter, Sanaya's childhood will be negatively affected by it plus Amani and Juliet will use her to hurt me hence, I chose to play along until Sanaya finishes university and stands on her own two feet. I knew all of this when I married you, and I have come to terms with the fact that I am your second wife. Although, I am thankful that you only consider me to be your wife. Also, I have absolutely no interest in anything that you bought when you were only married to Amani. Those assets belong to her and her kids, I trust the Lord to bless my children with what rightfully belongs to them. Thank you my love. Today, I invited you here for dinner to celebrate that you're about to become a father to a male child. I give God all the glory, and I pray that this child I am carrying as well as all of the children that we will have, will wipe away all of your tears. Thank you. I also have great news for you. Yes. In light of the fact that I am still legally married to Amani and since I know how wicked her daughter, Juliet, is, I have decided to transfer my mansions in Alexander Bay and the other one here, in the capital city, and the one overseas plus the 5,000 hectare farm, that I bought, into both of our names. Should I die then half of those assets will always be yours whereas, the other half will belong to our children. Darling, you shouldn't have. Love, I just want to secure your future and the future of the children that I have with you. The 100 acre estate in Granada Hills belongs to Amani and her two daughters, I will have nothing to do with it. You shouldn't get yourself involved in that estate, and Amani and her kids shouldn't get themselves involved in our assets. In fact, I don't want any of them to know where I live and what I own. Not even Sanaya must know this because she will innocently share the information with her wicked sister and mother. Yes. I love you Coco Pirellis, I mean Coco Morales. Although Pirellis sounds great. I love you and I thank the Lord for you, Commander VP Morales. Juliet dear, what is it? Why did you storm into the house? Mother, I told you that there was no way that Dad could have just been living alone in the capital city all of these years. He has been hiding his secret wife for some time now however, my informants managed to send me pictures of him and his mistress. What? I thought if I spend time fasting and praying for your dad to forgive us, he might return to us. It seems that we hurt your dad too deeply but at least I will go down the grave as his lawfully wedded wife. Mother, stop saying all of that nonsense and look at these photos. You and I know that you have one foot in Christianity and another in darkness. What? Yes, Dad is dating a young, beautiful and well-educated woman from an aristocratic family. My informants have told me that she is pregnant and they are expecting a baby boy. A baby boy? I will put an end to this nonsense. I am planning to travel to Andor. No, Juliet, don't sell your soul to those witches. We risk losing everything mother if this boy comes into the world. I won't take any chances. So pack my bags mother, I am leaving for Endor first thing in the morning. Yes dear, you are aware that when the devil gives you something with one hand, he will take what your life depends on with the other hand. I don't care mother, I am now deeply involved in this witchcraft. I am in so deep that I can't get out of it even if I wanted to. I have gotten away with so much evil through the help of the witches of Endor. Honey, be warned. Nothing is for free in this world. One day those witches, or the evil powers that possess them, will come to you and ask you to repay them for all they've done for you. Mother, that's nothing. Do you know how many of my unwanted pregnancies have given them so far? What, Juliet? Come on, mother. Don't act surprised. Just go ahead and pack my bags. Also, make sure that my bedroom is clean and tidy when I get back home from the club. Yes dear as you wish. Since we can't afford to keep any house helps and we are only left with one farm worker, I now do all of the household chores while you continue to try and maintain a privileged looking lifestyle. I will go to Endor tomorrow morning and before I return to Mesa Marrakesh, that Coco Pirellis woman will have a miscarriage. Be careful Juliet. If this Coco woman is a prayer warrior then this evil that you want to befall her will backfire. 
We'll see. I am Juliet Morales and I never back down from a fight. Thank you for watching this episode of Sinaya, A Quest for Peace. Please subscribe to our channel so that you get notified each time we upload a new video. We would like to leave you with the following verses to ponder on. John 10, 7-18 says, Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door, by me if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy, I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is a higher elling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and loveth the sheep, and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The higher elling fleeth, because he is a higher elling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold, and one shepherd. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Matthew 6 19-25, and 33 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye, if therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness! No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one, and love the other, or else he will hold to the one, and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God in mammon. Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we reflect on the intricate webs of deception and betrayal woven in this narrative, we seek your divine intervention and guidance. We lift up those who have been ensnared by darkness, praying for your light to pierce through the shadows and bring clarity and truth to their lives. Your word reminds us in Ephesians 5.11 to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather expose them, and we ask for the courage and discernment to follow your will in exposing and overcoming the schemes of the enemy. Lord, we intercede for families torn apart by strife and deceit, praying for reconciliation and healing to prevail. In the midst of fractured relationships and shattered trust, may your grace abound, restoring what has been broken and bringing forth redemption and renewal. Your word assures us in Psalm 147, 3 that you heal the brokenhearted and bind up their wounds, and we cling to this promise, trusting in your faithfulness to bring healing to wounded souls. Father, we pray for those who have been led astray by the allure of power and selfish ambition. Grant them the humility to repent and turn back to you, the source of true wisdom and righteousness. Help them to recognize the emptiness of worldly pursuits and to seek fulfillment in you alone. Your word admonishes us in James 4, 8 to draw near to you, and you will draw near to us, and we pray for hearts inclined towards repentance and restoration. In the midst of darkness, Lord, we cling to the hope of your redemption and the promise of your unfailing love. May your light shine brightly in the midst of our brokenness, leading us out of the shadows and into the glorious freedom found only in you. We entrust our lives and our stories into your hands, knowing that you are able to bring beauty from ashes and turn mourning into joy. 
In your precious name we pray, Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.